Okay, we'll begin. This is the last Perek, the last chapter of Mishlei. Perek Lamed Aleph. The very last few Pesukim dealing with the Eshet Hayal, a woman of valor, a special woman, where he describes the characteristics, the qualities of this woman, many of which, of course, not all, but many of which you will find in women. What stands out over here is that she has just about all of these qualities. That's what makes her very special. Pasuk Chav Bet Marvadim Astetalach Shesh Vergaman Libusha She makes beautiful bedspreads for herself. Fine linen and purple wool are her her raiment. Okay, her dressing. In other words, she dresses well. In this Pasuk, Shlomo Melech points out that an Eshet Hail is on top of her home She's well organized. She's a clean, a clean woman. She takes care of all the needs of the home. There are many women who are good in business, who take care of their kids, perhaps, but they're not necessarily organized and clean. Cleanliness is important, especially imagine if the husband, the man, is very organized and clean, and he married someone who doesn't care about cleanliness. It's a disaster. And you can go to some homes, visit some homes, and you can tell if the woman is a balabosta, as we say in Yiddish, if she's in, you know, takes care of her home or not, by seeing what's going on in the living room and dining room. Are, are, are things thrown around on the floor? Or is everything in its place? Is everything clean? Does everything look right? That says a lot about the kind of woman who's running the house. She has a maid too, Rabbi. Possible, but at least uh, it's important to her. You know, also, that's okay if you have a maid, but at least you tell the maid you, this is what you expect because it's important to you. But imagine going into a home where you see a couple diapers thrown in the living room and toys everywhere and uh, dirty clothes, you know, not in the hamper, but strewn about in the rooms. It doesn't say too much about the, the woman in the house. And if the husband has to live with it and he's very much the opposite, then it could be very difficult for him. So Aneshet Ha'il takes care of her home. She's organized, she's clean. And at the same time, Shesh Vargama Libusha, in other words, she dresses well. She takes care of herself, she looks right. And that's also very important to some men, I believe, right? That their wife look good, presentable. Even when she's cooking, even, if she, even when she's cleaning the home, it doesn't mean that she has to wear rags, that she has to not look right. The rabbis point this out in speaking to the woman that she has to look presentable to her husband. If she does not look presentable to her husband, what will that do? Not only will she lose favor in his eyes, he may look elsewhere. You see? So especially if it's important to him, and it is important to most women too, I believe, that they look right. But some women perhaps may ignore or may not emphasize this area as much and sometimes it's noticeable. So Aneshet Ha'il is strong in this area as well. She takes care of herself. We've spoken a lot about the Eshet Ha'il. Now Shlomo Amir switches over a little bit to the husband. As a result of this woman having so many good values, Her husband is known in the gates when he sits with the elders of the land. In other words, it is through the husband that many people come to know who this man's wife is. They can tell on the clothing that he wears. Remember in those days, back then a lot of the clothing was made at home. It was not, you didn't just go and buy your suit, buy pants, buy your shirt. It was made at home. So a lot can be seen about this woman through her husband. Nodaba Sharim Bala, her husband is the one that becomes familiar in town. It is through the husband that they know who this woman is. That is one interpretation. The other interpretation is that all the ma'asim, all the good deeds that w- were listed before about this woman are propagated in town through their husband. In other words, the husband is the one that is seen. This woman is like any other Jewish woman. Is She's supposed to be a very modest woman. It's noah. She doesn't just go out in public and publicize what she does. You know, she sits at home. She does what she does quietly. So who is the one that publicizes? How does the word get out in town? Who this woman is? How good? How good she is? How special she is? Through her husband. 
In other words, they see through the ma'asim, through the conduct of the husband, through the way he conducts himself, as we will see that point later on with the children too, that he must have a very special wife. So all her good qualities eventually come out through her husband. Another important idea over here about the husband, Nodaba Sha'arim Bala, her husband becomes known and respected in town, even though this woman of valor, this Eshet Chayel, is the one that's running the business, running the show, making the money, as we explained, I think, last week. Nevertheless, she doesn't step on him. She doesn't in any way oppose him uh, or embarrass him just because she's making more money than him, just because she's managing all the assets. Nodaba Sharim Bala, nevertheless, despite the fact that she's in control, and she may be in control much more than he is, nevertheless, she gives him the utmost respect. This man is known, he's respected, the Shiftom Zikniyaris, when he's amongst the elders, amongst people. She gives him the respect that he deserves, being the father, being the husband. A lot of women forget this point. That's, of course, another recipe for divorce. If the man does not uh, have the, the minimum respect, you know, it's, it's another. Th- it's one thing to demand it. You know, a man should not be too demanding of respect either. But it's it's quite logical that the man deserves, is entitled to, to a certain amount of respect because he's the man. He's the one that is supposed to be running the house. But even if he's not, he doesn't make as much money. It is a valuable lesson for the kids, and it's important for his ego. That's just human nature. If you want a relationship to succeed, you sometimes have to give in. It's very simple. You know, what's the big deal about giving in? Some people have a hard time giving in, and that's why they don't get along. They break up. So she's smart, even though she's, she's the one that's running the show. She knows that the respect of her husband is very important, not just for other people, but for herself as well. The commentaries also talk about the type of woman that supports her husband in learning Torah, takes care of him, and encourages him. And as a result of her encouragement and support, he's able to rise to gedulah, to great heights. And this, you know, may ring a familiar, uh, you know, bell. Uh, the woman, the wife of Rabbi Kiva, remember? She's the one that supported him. She's the one that pushed him and encouraged him. When he was on his way home after 12 years with many students, having learned a lot of Torah, he overheard her saying to her neighbor, believe me, I wouldn't mind if you would go back and study another 12 years. He picked himself up and went back without stepping into his own home. 24 years had gone by, 24,000 students later. When he comes back home and his wife finally goes out to greet him, and they see a woman approaching, they tell her, you know, get out of the way. This is the, the greatest rabbi. And he points to her and says to everybody, it's because of her that, that I have what I have, and that you, all of you, have what you have. In other words, all the knowledge that I possess now, all that I, I and you have learned is to her credit. Great woman she was, the wife of, the, of Rabbi Akiva. And some of these pesukim obviously are clearly... Uh, describing this great woman, the wife of Rabbi Akiva. You know the famous saying, I think it's in English, behind every great man or successful man, there's a great woman, something like that. There's a lot of truth to that. Many men who have succeeded owe their success to the great woman behind them, who is backing them, there for them, encouraging them, and sometimes even pushing, pushing hard for their husbands to succeed, and they deserve all the credit for that. As I said in the past shiur, that a woman can make or break the home. She's the one that builds or destroys the home. A lot depends on the woman. Next pasuk, Sadin asetava timkor v'chagor natnalek na'ani. She makes a cloak and sells it, and she gives a belt to the businessman, to the merchant. Here he translates it to the trafficker. I don't like that word trafficker. It sounds like trafficking with drugs. You know, a drug trafficker. You know, it means a businessman. It means that she has beracha in everything that she does. There's so much beracha that she has so much left over of what she has done that she's able to sell. To sell on and make money as a result of what's left over. That was 
והדר לבושך ותשחק ליום אחרון. A very, very important פסוק, perhaps one of the most important statements about the אשת חייל. עוז והדר לבושך, the translation is strength and beauty are her garment, and she laughs at the last day. What does it mean, עוז והדר לבושך? Strength and beauty are her garment, is that what, what she wears? He's talking about her true לבוש. What a, what a woman or what a man wears, the physical levush is just what covers his body. According to the Kabbalah, the neshama also has a levush. The neshama cloaks itself upstairs with all its mitzvot that it fulfilled in this world. A pair of pants, a shirt, socks. They're very similar to what we wear here in the physical world, but they're obviously spiritual. And the Kabbalists talk in great length about these garments, the spiritual garments. Oz v'hadar levusha, therefore, her true levushim, what she truly, what she really wears, are her ma'asim. Even though we just described how beautiful her clothes are, how she looks well, how she dresses her kids nicely and she takes care of her home. Oz v'hadar levusha, her real accomplishment, what really makes her beautiful, what really makes her look good, is her ma'asim, are her deeds her strength and her beauty, her spiritual strength and beauty. That is what really matters. But this haq le yom and she will, she will be the one to laugh in the last day. What's the last day? Right before she passes away. This is a very important statement. But this haq le yom literally means that she takes pride in all her accomplishments. She's able to look back and reflect on all the hard work that it paid off. You don't see immediate results when you're working hard. But after she's reached the stage, let's say, of 70, 75, and 80, and she's able to see children and grandchildren, great-grandchildren, going to the Derech HaTorah, marrying Jews like, the, like herself, uh, starting a Jewish home, that brings tremendous happiness, joy, and pride to the one who started it all. The matriarch, as they would call it in English, of the family. It could be her parents were not as strong, and she is the one that embarked on this new road. And she looks back, and what a beautiful family. What a close-knit family. You know, that, is, that is the greatest source of joy to anybody in this world. More than money, more than anything in the world, is if you're able to have what we call in Hebrew, Nahat. But Ishaq Leom Acharon is therefore describing Nahat. Nahat is the ultimate happiness and satisfaction of being able to see, while you're still alive, the fruit of your labor. Of course, those who have departed this world are able to look down and see and are aware of what's going on too. But it's very different when we're in this physical world and we're able to sense and observe with our physical eyes all the hard work that it paid off. So that is Haq Leom Acharon, she has reason to laugh. Laugh meaning she has reason to be happy about everything that she has done. But there's more to this. But this Haq Leom Acharon, you know, there's another saying in English, laugh laughs the one who laughs last how does is that how it goes the one who the one who laughs last he who laughs last is last best and that it very much applies over here why I'll tell you from my grandmother Allah Shalom when my mother was uh, a teenager my uncle was a teenager they were sent off from Brazil to New York Back then, we're talking about going in a boat, going on long journeys, eventually on a plane. It was a real mesirut nefesh, it was a real sacrifice to send a child. But Brazil was a big galut. There wasn't that many, that many Jewish institutions of higher learning, just barely elementary schools. So it was, it was the wise thing to do if you wanted to invest in chinuch, in education of one's children, is to send them away to Israel, to New York. New York was closer still was a far away journey. Uh, in those days when you went by plane, it took two days because the planes did not travel by night. They did not fly at night. They had to stop. And uh, we're talking about great distances. Expenses, different language. Nevertheless, my grandparents understood the importance of, of Jewish education and they sent off their kids. All three or four or five, eventually all five of them went to different places. And you know what they encountered? Relatives, friends, who mocked them. You're sending away. What, Brazil is not good enough for you? This, the institutions here, the schools are not enough. You have to spend your money, your hard-earned money, and send them away. You're not going to see them. You're not going to enjoy them. 
you're, gonna, you're not going to be able to remember we didn't have phones then and if they did they did have phones but they were expensive they sent telegrams remember the days of the telegrams <laughs> I remember even at my bar mitzvah that was a way of to communicate the Mazalto was still by telegram that wasn't too long ago they made, they made fun they made fun they made fun for many years until when until they came back they all came back from where they studied two of my uncles Alema Shalom became rabbis, one became a shohet and a mohel and he, he used to also check shatnez how many people in the community knew how to check shatnez wool and linen in the garment he studied all these all these halachot and, all, and, had, and acquired all these skills in the United States the other one also became a rabbi and of course my mother studied in Bet Yaakov eventually became a teacher when they came back, they were from the few religious individuals in Rio de Janeiro, you know, a city that did not have too many religious Jews. And it was because of individuals like themselves who were able to introduce more Yahadut to that city that some, some Torah was introduced and therefore the Jewish community continued to prosper, even though it was on a smaller scale. But that's not the greatest accomplishment. That was a beautiful thing they did. What really happened and what really mattered is, is as a result of sending these children away, my uncles and of course my mother married Jewish. Not only did they marry Jewish, they married someone observant like themselves with similar values. And of course raised families who were observant too, who eventually had kids who Baruch Hashem are observant. They're keeping the flame on of Judaism in the family. All of the rest of the family just about. If they did not intermarry, they assimilated and very few have any tradition left very few so they were laughing they were walking but my grandmother she was able to look back in the end of her days and even back then in seeing the difference of her investment of her thinking of her efforts that they paid off had she listened to them and they were the majority what would have happened so if, you're, if you are very strong about something, you have to be careful not to give in to all those who are mocking. And there, be, there will be many such individuals, many challenges in life who will try to dissuade you, to turn you off, to cool you off from something which is really good, something which is spiritual, something which is w- well worth your effort. Oz ve'adal therefore, you could also translate Oz means strength. It is her strength, Eshet Hayel, a woman of valor, of strength. And the beauty, the way that she conducted herself, the way that she did things, these are her true garments, these are her true accomplishments. And therefore, but Ishaq Leoma Haron, she's able to look back and be proud. But Ishaq Leoma Haron also means that she is able to leave this world with a good name, with a good reputation. As Shalom Melech tells us in Kohelet, Tov Shem, Mishem and Tov. A good name is much more important, much better than the best of oils, fragrant oils. A good name lasts forever. A good name is, is not only good here, it's good in the upper worlds too. So she dies with a good name. Ozva Adar Lebusha is also talking about her later years, when she's older. A lot of women slow down, a lot of men slow down when they become older. Ozva Adar Lebusha, but it's hardly Haron, even when she's older, and she is slowing down a little bit, she's not completely slowed down. Not the average woman. Why isn't she slowing down like the average woman? Why does she have more strength? Because all along throughout her life, what she did, she did beratzon u besimcha. She did willingly and she did it with happiness. If a person is unhappy about his job, if he feels that everything is a burden, if everything is a struggle and hard and difficult, so he drags himself to work. He's just looking forward to, to retire, right? Not this woman, the Eshet Chayel, there's no such a thing as retiring. How many of you have had a grandmother who helped out in the kitchen? I mean, not all of you remember a grandmother, right? But the good grandmother who was an Eshet Heil, who, had, who has a daughter who's also an Eshet Heil, would help, help make the cake, help make the Pesach. As long as she was healthy and she could stand on her feet, that's what, she, that's what a, a grandmother would do, you know? So even in her later years, a woman who was active when she was younger, who liked to do this would of course like to help out help out with her daughters with her grandchildren as long as she's healthy 
And this woman, this Eshet Chayim, does not weaken as quickly because all along, all her life, she did what she did with happiness, but at some with the goodwill. And it pays off. You see that all this makes a difference. I may have mentioned it to you or mentioned to others that one of the secrets of a long life, besides, of course, the Beracha Hashem, who, who is the one that gives life, but there are known recipes for better chances of a long life. And one of them is being always happy with what you have, never taking anything to heart, right? Not, not feeling miserable about the situation. A lot of people who have lived past 100, if you ask them, tell me, how did you do it? And we're talking about smokers too. Smokers, what, what is it? How come, you know, is, is there anything? If you ask them all, you will find a common denominator. We had always a good attitude, a positive attitude about everything. Rarely did they get upset. Just about every one of them who's over 100 will give you the same answer. Rarely got upset, had a good attitude, always happy, always content. And there were not people who pursued luxuries. They did not have a tense life, not too much pressures. Even though they may have managed big companies, but they, they took it easy. That helps a lot. And therefore, even though somebody may have worked all her life, taking care of the business, taking care of the home, taking care of her kids, she's still able to continue even her later years. That is a real blessing. But this Chak Yoma Haron, she's able to smile even in her later years. Even though I wasn't planning to speak about it, I need to mention it now. Since we're talking about elderly people, you know, our parents took care of us when we were younger. It only, it only makes sense and it's only right and that we pay it back when they are, reach their later years and they're not able to take care of themselves. Unfortunately, this country, they don't believe in that too much. They lock away their parents in an old age home. Now, I'm not talking about somebody who can't take care of themselves, who needs a lot of help. They need a nurse, that's something else. But somebody who, who is able to walk around, able to enjoy life, should still be with the kids. There are a few that would prefer to be by themselves. They want their independence, they don't want to be a burden over the children. But you should know one thing, it's a very tricky. It's a very tricky and sensitive situation because if you have your parents in your house, you have to be very careful with kibbut davaim. So it's tricky to have them in your home, you have to be sensitive to everything. And they may not communicate the, their feelings completely to you. On the other hand, if you don't have them in your house, you're not doing for them what you should be doing. So every situation has to be judged in individually, independently. However, in general, as long as possible and as much as possible, a parent should be with their children. It definitely, the majority of them are happy to be amongst the children. The only exception really is the ones who are independent. But you know why they really want to be by themselves? Not so much because of their independence. It's because they don't feel loved. They don't feel that the, the child really wants them in the home. They feel that they're a burden. Not that they don't want to be a burden. They really feel they're a burden. And therefore, they'd rather be by themselves. We have to make them feel welcome. We have to take care of them. You know, and it's, not only is it a mitzvah, it's the right thing to do. And sometimes, you know, older p- people can be very, very difficult. And it may require some help, some assistance. After all, the younger kids are working. The husband is working. The wife is working. And you might need to, ha- you might need to have some help. The kids should take uh, turns taking care of the parent. That's the right thing to do. And there's a saying about that. A mother can take care of 14 children, and 14 children cannot take care of one mother. Something like that, right? Unfortunately, in this country, it's so true. You know why it's so true in this country? As I explained in in my lecture five years ago or so, in the video, then that is because many of the children, once they reach 17 and 18, the parents throw them out of their home. Go rent yourself an apartment. Learn to live on your own. That's also a very silly idea. A child should be with his parents until he gets married. And uh, the only time a child can be on his own, if he's still single, is obviously if he has a job somewhere else, he's living on on campus or something, which is an exception. But otherwise, the family should be together as much as possible. The next pasuk, Also very, very, very special Pasuk about the Eshet Ha'il. She opens her mouth with wisdom and instruction of kindness is in her tongue. A lot of people love to talk. I don't want to discriminate and I don't want to say women do all the talking because some men talk a lot too. But in Hebrew there's something called pitput. 
Pitput in English, I don't know, how would you translate Pitput? Idle talk, nonsense, shtuyot, just talking. And a lot of people do that all, the, all day long. And Eshet Heil measures her words, does not overdo it. And when she opens her mouth, she speaks wisdom, she speaks things that make sense, or value. She just doesn't chat. She just doesn't talk just for the sake of talking. The Torah Chesed Aleshona, which is also very special, which means that she, her instruction is of kindness. In other words, she gives a lot of instructions, a lot of the words that is heard on her tongue coming out from her mouth are instructions of kindness. She's talk, you, you will hear her talk a lot about tzedakah, about chesed, let's go help the neighbor, let's, let's bake a cake, let's make something for Shabbat. This person is be'evil. They're in mourning. And as you know, a person in mourning, they don't cook for themselves. People help out. Let's go make them dinner. Let's go prepare them something. You know, these people don't have, you know, for Shabbat, for the Hagim, let's buy them something. So Torah Chesed HaLeshona and Eshet Chayil, as we said before, is not selfish. She's always thinking of how to provide for others, not only for herself and for her family. So you will hear a lot of her conversations will have to do with Chesed. So here's a woman that when she does open her mouth, it's chokhmah and it's chesed. She supervises the ways of her household and does not eat bread of idleness. She supervises. She does not ignore her children. She looks after them. She's so busy taking care of her house, but nevertheless, this is very important. Remember, what, what did we say in the very beginning of this chapter? That many, house, many husbands are away from the home they don't have the chance to, to be around their children, to instruct them, to teach them. She's the one that's responsible for that, not only to send them off to the school, but to supervise them, to see that everything is right. She has to watch out. And you really have to really watch out for your kids today, especially today, when there's so many things out there in this world that can easily mislead them. So Tzofiyah Halichot Beta, she watches over her kids, she looks after them. She supervises them. This is also very, very powerful. And she does not eat bread of idleness. Atzlut really means laziness or idleness. This is very interesting because there's a lot of women, there are a lot of men too, that they love to delegate. Does everybody here understand what the word delegate means? Delegate is a very nice word to be used with supervisors and big managers and companies. It's a, very, it's a very good thing because the supervisor cannot do everything himself. Right? If he wants the job to be done, the trick is to know how to delegate, to who to delegate, to get the job done. The fact is you can't do everything. But if you have people working for you, that's very good. You have to know how to delegate the job. If the supervisor is going to be stuck doing things that belong to the clerk, to the secretary, he's not going to get the main job done. Right? to print a paper or to do something very, very small, give it to the secretary. That's called delegation. However, when it comes to the household, take out the garbage. You do it. Let, let him do it. You know how children always point to someone, why should I do it? Right? So it's very easy for one to give it to somebody else to do, not to do it himself. She's not lazy. She's not looking to be idle. She's not looking for a way out. She'll do it herself if nobody else does it. You know what you say? Because I'm in a rush, whether it's dinner or whether it's something else. So my wife, Baruch Hashem, doesn't forget. She takes care of everything. Picks up, removes, does everything. It would help, of course, if everybody took care of everything and, you know, everybody knew what they had to do. But sometimes things are left for other people to do. And Eshet Chayil doesn't mind so much. What did we say before? She takes it as a hook. It's her duty. She understands, but they sometimes complain too. You know, why didn't you do it? No, next time, do it yourself. Well, it depends what it is. You know, some things we have to do her, ourselves. But in any event, because she's not lazy, because she doesn't look for idleness, because she doesn't want to just to hand it to somebody else to do, so she doesn't have to do it, she takes care of it without complaining. That's a beautiful midah. But please, don't take advantage of her. 
if you have such a woman, it doesn't mean that you can take advantage and let her do everything in the house. In my younger years, right after I was married, I used to, of course, have more time. The children were, have not, had not arrived yet. And you know what I used to do? I sometimes think about it. My wife reminds me of this all this time. You used to wash dishes with me. How come you're not doing that anymore? <laughs> Yes, that's true. We used to wash dishes. I used to dry the dishes. And it was very, it was done. Basimha. It was like, of course, it was normal to help out. We would do everything together, almost. Shopping, not so much. But today, of course, as the years go by, and the kids come, and you have more responsibilities, less time, and you're tired too. So, you know, you give it to somebody else to do. It helps to have a maid too. But uh, it's very nice to help out it's very important not to be lazy, not to give it over to somebody else to do. If you're offered the opportunity to do something, grab it and don't complain about it, as long as you can do it. Her children rise and call her fortunate, also her husband, and praises her. What this means is that the kids, more than anybody else, and the husband, are able to confirm, are able to confirm the praise of their mother, of their wife, of his wife, of more than anybody else who knows the mother, who knows this woman, the kids, the husband, more than anybody else, they can point out whether Chaz Shalom after 120 during the eulogy, they will speak, they will point out many of the things that nobody was aware about, that she did privately, quietly, not ostentatiously. So the kids and the husband are able to know everything that is going on in this woman. But not, not exactly everything, but more than anybody else. But also, if they don't only talk about it, it is through their conduct, the way the children conduct themselves. And as we said before, the husband conducts himself. You can tell a lot about who this woman is. Who is the mother of these children? Such beautiful kids behave themselves so well, dress so well, so nicely. A lot can be said about the woman by looking at her children, by looking at her husband. Rabot banot asuhail bat alit al kulana. Also, very, very strong pasuk. Many women have acquired wealth, but you surpass them all. What is he trying to say? The word hail means strength. That's true. But what strength is he talking about? Many women have acquired wealth. He calls it wealth here. Not only wealth. Hail could mean anything of value. A lot of women have beauty. A lot of women have money. But you surpass them all because you have everything. What's everything? What's more important than money and beauty? the good deeds, the chokhmah. By Eshet Chayel, by the fact that she has the chokhmah and the masim to the good deeds, that means she surpasses all of the ones that have beauty and wealth. Because the beauty and wealth are really insignificant compared to the real achievements in life, as we're going to see soon, which is Yirat Hashem. That is the simple interpretation of this pasuk. The other interpretation is, Rabot Banut Aso you will find a lot of women that are strong in some area. This woman is a great cook. This woman is a great, uh, I don't know, teacher. This other woman is very kind, right? You will find a lot of women that excel or are strong, a suhail, are strong in some area. That, a little kulana, and you are surpassing all of them because you have all of those qualities. Now, I have to be honest with you. I don't know too many women who, are, who also play the piano, who are also good looking, who also are kind, who also are good cooks, and who are um, very devoted. You know, all the qualities in one is hard to find. You know, and I said, that, I said this before. It's rare, Eshet Chayil Miyim Tsa, remember what we said? It's very rare to find all the qualities in one, so therefore don't wait for those of you who are single to find that perfect woman that has all these qualities. But you know what? There are women that are very close to having many of the qualities that are enumerated here. And let us not forget that a lot of these qualities are, you're not born with. Basically, you have to acquire them and work on them. So anybody can become an Eshet Chayil. For the woman who's very lazy by nature, I'm sure it's going to be very difficult for her to let, not to stop being lazy. But regardless, all of the qualities that are mentioned here can be acquired. One can work on to be kind, to be devoted, to work hard to be good with the kids, to supervise them, to support the husband. All of these are not very difficult if you really believe in this way. But the Eshet Ha'il 
Alit al kulana means that she has just about all of these good qualities. And now we've come to one of the most famous pesukim that many of you are probably familiar with and have heard of. Sheker achen vehevel ayofi isha yirat adonai hitit halal. Charm is false and beauty is futile and a God-fearing woman is to be praised. I think uh, most of you understand that hen, charm, grace, is false. What does it mean false? It doesn't tell you too much about the person. As the Rabbi tells in Pirkei Avot, Al tistakel ba kan kan, ela ba yeshbo. Don't look at the outside vessel. There are some beautiful, shiny vessels, but they're made of fake gold. You know, you can, you can make something look like gold, but it's not gold. You know the difference between pure brass and non-pure brass? Anybody know, how do you know if something is pure brass or not? Just wait a little bit. The one that's not pure will tarnish if it's not real pure brass. So sheker a hen, there's a lot of hen out there, but the hen by itself could be misleading. It doesn't tell you too much about the person. But what about beauty? The hevel a yofi. Beauty is not necessarily misleading, but beauty is hevel. Beauty is insignificant or futile as he calls it here. By itself, what will it help you? If you have a beautiful woman, you have the Miss Universe. And she's, you know what, she's the Miss Universe 10 years in a row, if there was something like that. That must be beautiful. But she's a rotten person. Rotten person. She doesn't take care of the house. She doesn't look at you. She doesn't help you out. She curses. Who, who cares that she's beautiful? What does it help? So it's heaven by itself. Now, if you have somebody that has pen, yofi, and Yirat Hashem, then you're a lucky man. If you have uh, everything, I mean, he didn't say that those things are bad. He said that those things by themselves are misleading or are insignificant by themselves. And therefore, since they are insignificant, don't look for them. Don't put your emphasis on them. As I've heard it from a lot of men. I need a beautiful woman. She has to be gorgeous. I said that should be number three or four in your list, not number one. You know, I can understand that, but not number one. Tell me what's number one in your list. Then I'm telling you, and then I'll tell you if you're in the right track. Number four, number five on your list, that's okay. Why not? Everybody wants to live with something that they can look at every morning. You need to. It, yes? Yes? Yeah. That's right. I agree 100%. A good, good, a good natured person, a religious person, a healthy, healthy person. person, and somebody doesn't have too much money. Not too much money. That's right. Very true. Yes. That's what you should concentrate on. That's what you should focus on. Yeah. Yes. He's 100% right. So therefore, Chen and Yofi are by themselves insignificant. So what is important? Yirat Hashem, she's a God-fearing woman. As we said before, she's the mother of the children, not only the, the wife. So Yirat Hashem, the reason why he points to Yirat Hashem over here is for the following reason. Hen and Yofi are gifts in Hashemayim. Matanam Hashem, Isha Yafa, Yesh Lochen, Yesh Lachen, Charm. Matanam Hashem, it's a gift. I don't care how many plastic jobs you do. Uh, surgery. surgery, thank you. To your face, nose jobs and all these things. Either you have the Hen and the Yofi or not. Very, very small changes can be accomplished with the nose job. But, Yirat Hashem is a true accomplishment. The Hen and the Yofi you are born with, or you're not. Yirat Hashem, Akol Bidei Shamayim, Chutz Mirat Hashem, Chutz Mirat Shamayim. This is the most important achievement in one's life. Did they become a God-fearing person or not? Did they fulfill the mitzvot or not? Did they care about Torah or not? This is, your, this is where our free will comes into play. A woman that does not have Yirat Shamayim, forget it. And remember, and I'm going to remind you again, for those of you who are still singing, going out with somebody who's, who's not religious. I'm going to make him religious. Forget about it. Maybe he'll make you secular. Who's to say that you are stronger than him or her? Unless you're completely convinced, you and your rabbi, not you by yourself, that he or she is in the right direction, they're serious, they're becoming valet shubad, they have the potential of becoming stronger, then maybe, maybe yes, depending on everything else. But be careful. Yirat Hashem is the most important. It's the most important because that really distinguishes people. That is the most important acquisition in life. That is something that you acquire you're not born with. That is a true achievement. Yirat Hashem is not easy. It takes time to develop. It takes time to work on. 
but it's something that everybody can acquire. Everybody can become a God-fearing person. The reason why he leaves it to the very end is because he's talking about those who are still single, looking for a woman, and he's telling, listen, what's going to make a big difference in your life is if your wife is going to be Yerat Hashem. That makes the biggest difference, more than anything else. And that is what you should focus on. That is the most important tchuna, the most important characteristic that you should look for in a woman. As uh, was mentioned earlier, she needs to be healthy. He needs to be healthy. He or she need to have the same, similar values that you have. They have to be God-fearing. Torah has to be important to, in their life. If this, if any or one of these is missing, then you're, then it's probably not for you. It's not your basheret. It's not your batzug. You're not your benzug. If you're the opposite. So he's telling us this is what we should be looking at. We should want something, of course, that is appealing, something that, somebody that has parnasa. We need to look at all these, these uh, important things as well. But more important than anything else is Yirat Hashem. Either he or she has it or they don't. And the last pasuk, Tnula mi priya dea, v'yalelua v'sha'arim Which loosely translated means, give her from the fruit of her handiwork of her labor and her ma'asea, her deeds will be praised throughout the land, in all the gates, in all places. What that means is that in the end, this is a woman that needs to be admired. These are the qualities that we should look at. These are the things that we should want for ourselves. And also, these are the qualities that will eventually become publicized or made known. Everybody will, will know about her. As we said before, she will have a good name and a good reputation towards the end. If you ever have a chance to open up this chapter, this last uh, chapter of Eshet Chayil, you will notice that the whole Eshet Chayil is written in the Aleph Bet. Eshet Chayil begins with an Aleph. Batach Balev Balezabet, Gemalatu Buragimol Darsha Dalet, Haitakon Yotzochehe, Batakum Vav Zamema Zain. The whole thing is the Aleph bit, right? Sheker Achen, the Shin, and the last Pasuk, Nula Mi Priya Dea, the Taf. The whole Aleph bit is in the Eshet Chayil. What for? So the commentaries explain that a good woman or good Midot is the foundation of everything, is the best preparation for the man to succeed in life, to succeed in Torah Mitzvot. The greatest help that he can have in getting there in succeeding is if he has a good woman, if he has a good wife. One has good midot. Good midot for oneself and good midot in one's spouse are the most important ingredients for Hatzlacha, for success in Torah Mitzvot. And that's why the whole Aleph Bet, which is the whole structure, the whole foundation of, of the Torah, of Judaism, is, is found here in the Eshet Ha'il. In the same way that the goof the body, the physical body, is necessary for the neshama to prepare it to achieve whatever it needs to achieve in this world. In the same way, the midot tovot, the good character, a good wife, is important for a man to reach to his greatest potential, his greatest heights. When we spoke about zivugim and shiduchim, I mentioned the fact that a true zivug is an ezer kenegdo, one complements the other where the other one is lacking. The two together form a very powerful unit very very strong connection if the two are really for each other it's a, it becomes a very powerful connection as they say two heads are better than one and that is especially when two people are not opposing each other they are working with each other imagine if Am Israel would be with the Hadut you know what tremendous power that would be what tremendous force that would be and the opposite the Pilug the Mahloket causes destruction and our greatest destruction and problems therefore has come from ourselves that we've been so divided. So therefore, a woman who has all these good midot, lucky is the man who, who has such a woman because she will really help him reach his greatest potential. And so will he, if he has those right midot, help her achieve the greatest potential. The last ideas expressed on this pedic are as follows. Commentaries tell us that Shlomo Melech did not only have in mind and did not only praise the righteous woman, the woman of valor, but he also praised the Torah. Every single Pasuk in Eshet Chayil is also speaking about the Torah. I'm just going to give you a couple examples. Eshet Chayimim Saber Ahok Mepininim Yechra, talking about the beauty of the Torah, how precious it is, more precious than anything else, more precious than any other occupation 
more, more valuable than all the monies in the world. One who occupies himself with the Torah will never be lacking anything in Olam Azeh and in Olam Abav. Shalal Yassar means that he will always have and he will gain tremendously. The Torah will only do you good, will protect you, will be a source of blessing. Darshat Semer Ufishtim Batas Behefetz Kapea is talking about the various parts of the Torah, the Gemara, the Drasha, the Mishnayot, the Mikra, everything that is necessary to give over to the students to, to, for one to study. Talking about getting up early in the morning to study Torah, staying up late in studying the Torah. All of, the, all of these concepts that we just read, all these Pesukim, can be explained in the value that, of the Torah. And finally, according to the Kabbalah, Eshet Chayil is talking about the Neshama. The beautiful Neshama that's coming down clean from the upper worlds into this world, how precious this Neshama really is, how much potential it has to accomplish in this world. But it's only given a number of years to do this job. And unfortunately, a lot of individuals forget their, their main job, their main purpose in life, and go and wander and do other things. And eventually come up with very few ma'asim, with very few mitzvot. The point that perhaps is most significant here for the neshama to remember is, Velechem matzlut lo tochel. As the Kabbalah says, the purpose for the neshama to come down here to begin with is so that it should not earn its share to the world to come uh, as bread of shame by doing nothing. Every neshama who is a helek elokamima, a part of God, wants to earn it on its own. It wants to work for its share to world amaba. It does not want to have bread of shame or bread of idleness, as he calls it here. So lechem atzlut lo the neshama does not want to have something for free. Therefore, the whole purpose, the whole idea of Hashem sending down the neshama into this world is earn your share, work hard, accomplish your unique, customized individual goal that you were, that you were created for, and each one has something. Come down and do this, and when you are finished and you return, the whole Pamalya Shel Mala, all of our relatives who have departed from this world, all the neshamot, together with the Shekhinah, will come and greet us, and they will be overjoyed overjoyed to see us that we have accomplished what we have accomplished. As the Kabbalah says that one who leaves this world and goes upstairs and sees that his relatives as they're approaching him are sad, they look sad, it is a sign that something is wrong, that the Neshama did not do everything right. If they come to him happy and overjoyed to see him and to receive him, it's a good sign. And that is what we have to aim for. We have to aim for that we should acquire the most important asset of all, and that is Yirat Hashem. That is how Shlomo Melech finishes Kohelet too. Just like he finishes here with Yirat Hashem, he says in Kohelet, Sof davara kol nishma, the end and what counts and what matters the most is that Elohim yirav et mitzvotav shemur kizek kol adam. Observe his mitzvot, listen to him, be God-fearing, follow in his statutes. Kizek kol adam, this is what matters the most. This is what counts, this is how we will be judged. This is our real accomplishment. Everything else we will leave behind. What we take with us is how much Yirat Shammai we have accomplished, we have achieved in this world. So, just to finish the Perek, you know, this is the last of uh, Mishlei. Without Hashem, next week we will have a movie here as a, as a, uh, I don't want to, as a transition into our new series, a very special movie, Shata Efes in English, Zero Hour, talking about the situation in Israel very, very relevant, a very powerful movie that I very, very, very much recommend if you haven't seen it, a very powerful message. But uh, I think the, the messages of Mishle, we should not forget as we go on to the next series, whether you are single or you are married, we all have the potential to make our home a true Bayit Neiman Bisail, which is the dream and the aspiration of every Jewish family, is to have a home that is Neiman, that is, that is uh, based on the foundations of Judaism. A house that is reliable, a house that is solid, and, uh, and for a house to be solid and to have the, these foundations, it has to be built on these values, where the husband and wife do not oppose each other, where they are for the same things, they believe very strongly in the same thing, they invest in their marriage, but above all, they know who the real boss is. Yirat Hashem Hitit Halal. He comes first. We are here to serve Him, not to serve ourselves. A husband and wife who, who have this idea in their mind constantly, 
that he is first and we will do what finds favor in his eyes first, I am sure that without Hashem they will succeed.